Hey, welcome back skateboard nerds. This is video three in our four part beginner balance tips series. In this video, we're gonna talk about how the ankles control pressure across, the, uh, across your foot and to help you with balance and how the ankles are connected to the knees and the hips and the spine. And you may find that you're doing things you didn't even know you were doing that have a big impact on your overall balance and it all starts with the ankles. In the last video, we talked about your foot position and how important it was to get your feet in the right place on the board. And there's a huge reason why, because when we get our foot in the right position on the board, we can actually bend our ankles so that we have freedom of movement through our ankles, knees, hips, and spine, which is what allows us to skateboard. So if your feet are in the wrong spot, you're not gonna be able to flex your ankles, and ankle flex is critical to balance. Then we're gonna talk about how the joints are connected. So if you bend your ankles, how do you bend your knees? So you're gonna hear a lot of people say, just bend your knees, bend your knees, bend your knees. Well, the reality is you have to bend your ankles to allow for knee flex. And when your knees bend, your hips are probably gonna to have to bend and your spine is gonna to have to flex or bend a little bit, right? So they're all connected. And then we're gonna talk about how pressure is distributed across the foot. So we got this whole foot tripod thing where you have three points of contact on your feet and it's really critical to understand where you want that pressure and what's gonna give you more freedom of movement to learn tricks and control your board and turn and do all these things that you wanna do on your skateboard. So let's dive into this thing and figure out just how important it is to be able to bend the ankles and control pressure across your foot uh, through, through controlling and balancing out the movements of all your joints. Ankles, knees, hips, and spine. Okay, so why is foot placement so important? It's because if we put our feet in the wrong place, we won't be able to bend our ankles the way we need to bend them to allow for all the movement of the knees and the hips and the upper body. There's so much that goes on from the ankles all the way up. And if we're in the wrong spot, we just won't be able to create the other movement without shifting pressure and balance to one edge or the other or maybe from the nose to the tail. Well, you can compensate for some weird foot positions and skaters have to because when they learn new tricks, their feet are in all kinds of different positions. You, you can compensate for it, but you have to figure out the easiest place to start from. So for a beginner, you don't want your feet in an odd position. You want them in that sort of dialed in position, you know, back foot on the tail, across the board, front foot up by the front bolts, across the board, because this will allow you the greatest range of motion while flexing the ankles without tipping the board one way or the other. The key is you have to be able to get as low as you can and as tall as you can without making the board tip, you know, keeping it level the whole time. Let's say you step on the board with the feet too far towards the toe side edge, with your toes hanging off the edge. You're almost instantly gonna try to find balance because your board's gonna wanna tip towards the toes really hard. So you're gonna maybe extend your knees and bend at the hips and do these weird things to try to create awkward balance and it's not gonna work all because you put your feet in the wrong spot on the board. So let's say you have your feet too far towards the heel side edge. It means the board's automatically gonna tip towards the heel side edge, it's gonna wanna turn towards the heels and you're gonna do some weird things to try to compensate for that. You're probably, most beginners, will straighten their legs, bend over at the hips and try to counterbalance that somehow to try to flatten the board out. It won't really work very well what you'd actually have to do is stand all the way up on your tippy toes to get the board to level out, which would be really hard and, and you know unstable. So when you get your feet positioned with the ball of the feet just slightly ahead of the center line towards the toe side edge, you're gonna be able to bend your ankles, knees, hips nice and evenly so that you can move up and down quite a lot, have, good, have a good center point to start from, and then adjustments to correct for balance. It's gonna happen from in the ankles and the hips, uh, but very small movements because the closer you are to that center line, the smaller the movements you're gonna have to make to say correct balance or to turn the board. And it's really important that you find that spot where your joints can flex nice and even and get down in the middle, middle range of flex of your ankles, knees, and hips so that you can make small micro moves to adjust balance and to tip the board so that you can turn. Okay, so let's go a little deeper into how the ankle and the foot works, right? So you can understand how pressure is distributed across the foot and across the board. 
So your foot is kind of like a tripod. Think of it. Think of it just like a tripod. You know, imagine a camera tripod or you know any 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 three leg of support because your foot actually has three contact points. Right? It's got that little pinky toe sort of contact pad, the one by the big toe, right? And then it's got the heel pad, and those three pads create the pressure points that you're going to be distributing pressure across as you move your body around. So now think of it like this: the lower leg is like a joystick, and as you move that joystick around, like for a video game, like an analog joystick, as you move that around, you're going to shift pressure across the foot, right, to one pad or the other, and you're going to feel that pressure distribute differently. So if I tip it forward, I'm going to feel it more towards the front pads, the ball, the ball of my foot, and I'm. If I tip it forward at an angle, I'm going to feel that little pinky pad. If I tip it forward at this angle, I'm going to probably feel that big toe pad. If I straighten my or extend my ankle and my lower my lower leg, the joystick straightens out, I'm going to feel pressure more towards my heel, right? So it really, and as I move that lower leg around, I'm going to feel my center of mass move around with it. And the center of mass is really that area of your body um, that's around, say, like your belly, your hips, your your butt, your upper legs, like the heaviest part of your body, that center chunk. And as you move that around, you're going to feel pressure shift, right? And this is essentially what we talk about when when we say we gotta you gotta shift your balance, or you gotta shift your weight, or you gotta do this, right? We're, we're literally just thinking about shifting pressure from one part of one foot to another part of that foot, or to the other foot. And if we can get that pressure distributed evenly between both feet and evenly across the whole foot and each foot evenly, then we're gonna have a nice place to start from. And again, that's the key. We gotta find that sweet spot to work from. So let's say we're in that good even stance, sort of duck stance, both feet kind of across the board. If you look at what it looks like to have the weight shifted towards the tail, you're gonna see the lower legs. One leg is gonna be tipping you know, back and, and the joints of that leg is gonna, are gonna straighten out. The ankle, knee, and hip of that leg are gonna get straighter. The back leg is going to flex more, so the ankle, knee, and hip of the back leg is going to get sh you know flexed more and shorter, and that's how weight starts to shift back, right? So if we want to shift it forward, it's kind of the opposite of that. Now let's look at it from the example of our feet, you know, in that classic sort of beginner position, one foot across, one foot straight ahead. Let's look at that position because now when I bend my ankles, knees, and hips, you're going to see that the lower legs all of a sudden have to function differently. For, the, for, for me to shift pressure towards the toe side edge or towards the heel side edge, my lower leg has to tip laterally across my foot this way to make anything happen. And my back leg becomes more effective because my back foot's across the board. So I'm gonna be more able to use that tripod to shift pressure from the balls of the feet to the heels of the feet and so on, right? So if the tripod is pointed in line with the center line, we're actually, we actually start to have very small control over how the board tips. But if the tripods are pointed across that center line, we have more control to tip the board and create uh, balance, dynamic balance and turning or going straight in the case of starting out as a beginner. So again, let's say you point both feet forward, now your lower legs are tipping just across the foot laterally on that skinny side and if your feet are kind of on the center line, you're going to have very little leverage. It may seem like you have a lot, but you really don't have a lot of leverage to tip the board and turn. So keep that in mind. That's a higher level kind of stance. You'll see people cruising around that kind of surf style. It's fun. But you're going to want to start out again with that nice duck stance because when the feet are both across the board, all of a sudden our tripod starts to create a lot of leverage and pressure from the front pads or the, the balls of the feet to the heel of the foot, and you have the ability to tip the board more and control the direction of travel more easily. Now, it's really important to understand that if the ankles and knees are extended, meaning your ankle's like at a 90 and your knee is straight up and down, then you're not going to be able to articulate that lower leg. Those joysticks all of a sudden are frozen, and you will start to tip from the upper body to create shift towards the edges or towards the nose and tail of your board. It's really important, it's so critical that you get into that tripod flex position where it all lines up and the pressure evens out so that you can articulate the lower legs, right? And allow for different movements between the upper and the lower body to create balance and control of the board. A good example is let's say I wanna tip the board towards the toe side edge. If my ankles and knees are bent, all I have to do is extend my hips a little bit, just kind of open my hips up a little bit, very, very little, and the board will start to tip right towards the toe side edge. As long as I keep flexing my ankles, keep the knees a little bit bent, extend my hips, I'll get toe side edge pressure and balance. 
I'll be able to carve that way. And conversely, if I want to go to the heels, all I'm going to do is bend my hips a little bit and take my hips and bend them so they shift back while my knees stay bent, right? And my toes are going to lift up. I'm going to take those toes and lift them up just a little tiny bit. That's kind of an ankle flex move, right? That's going to make the board tip towards the heels. I'm going to be able to hold that position and create balance, and I'll be able to carve. That's, that's kind of the critical nature. Once we get our feet in the right position across the center line so that we can use the tripod kind of action of the foot to create leverage and pressure, then we all we have to do is make subtle adjustments between the ankles and the hips. The knees are always kind of bending. That way, we have the best poss possible control available. Now, how the joints all come together, right? Because if you bend the ankles, you gotta bend the knees. If you don't and you just bend the ankles, you would tip forward and fall over like a tree. Right? If you only bent your knees and you didn't bend at the ankles and hips, you would just sit and fall backwards. I mean, just think about it. It'd be like, it'd be very, very unstable. If you bend at the hips, but you don't bend the knees or the ankles, you're going to fall forward again. So those three joints really have to work together. So the ankles have to flex to allow the knees to flex and the, the hips have to flex to help stabilize based on how much we're bending the ankles and knees. For example, the lower I get, the more hip flex you're going to see. This taller I stand, you know, the more straight up and down my, my spine is gonna be. So they're connected and we're always trying to find balance over that center line when we're trying to roll straight. Now if we're creating a carve or we're executing a trick, you're gonna see different body positions. And here's the thing as a skater, you're gonna learn all kinds of stances. I mean, this the setup foot position for a kick flip or an Ollie is very different than the setup for rolling straight as a beginner. Right? If we're carving around a bowl, we might find we may we may opt for a narrower or a wider stance. If we're gonna do a nose stall, we may slide our foot to the front of the board instead of being right on top of the bowl. So we're gonna have to get good at shifting our feet around to different parts of the skateboard and still be able to move up and down without losing balance, right? Flex all those joints without losing balance so that we can jump, pop, pump, do all those things that we've gotta do as a skater to rip around the skate park or get around get around your neighborhood or whatever it is you're trying to accomplish on your board. So keep in mind that those joints are absolutely connected. Now a great place to start is somewhere in the middle of all of the flex ranges, right? The flex and extend ranges of your of your ank of your joints. So the ankles, knees, hips, and spine. Your spine can curve and it can arch, right? So when we think about that, we want to put a little curve on our spine. We want to bend the ankles, the knees, hips and spine into kind of a mid-range kind of position so we're, we're able to move up or down and we'll have the best opportunity to adjust pressure from toes to heels and from nose to tail of the board, give us the best control. If you're standing with your legs locked out and your feet in weird positions and your body all in crazy positions, you, get, you lose balance, you're gonna slam and that's no fun and we don't want that for anybody. So make sure you find that sort of middle of the range middle of the range stance to start with and try to aim for that every time you step on the board starting out. I hope this video gives you a great uh, sort of understanding of where things have to align with the joints to, to control pressure the best over the center line of the board to control the tipping and the and stabilization of the board but as well to also allow you to create the biggest ranges of motion available to you so that you can get better at skateboarding faster and I think of all the I think of the neutral sort of position is like a reference stance. It's not the only place or only way to stand on your skateboard. It's just a great place to start out for someone who's just learning how to skate and wants the best chance at stability. I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and hit me in the comments if there's anything else I can help you with in terms of understanding how balance works or any other skills that you're interested in. I'll try to keep these videos rolling forward. Uh, I love using uh, subscriber content to kind of break things down and share ideas, so feel free to submit. Hit me in the comments. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Our goal is to help you learn how to skateboard and understand more about skateboarding. If this video helped you, be sure to hit us up in the comments below and tell us what you'd like us to focus on for our next video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and then subscribe to our channel and tell your friends all about us. If you'd like to learn more about the United States Skateboard Education Association, please visit www.ussea.us where you can learn more about how to skate, learn more about helping others learn how to skate, and become a certified skateboard coach.